Howdy folks, I'm Mark Ryan. This is Super Review, and this is the new Shox Open Run Pro. Uh, this is the latest bone conduction headset from the brand Shox, formerly known as Aftershocks. And this showed up on the website a couple of months ago. Advertising, it's got uh, ninth generation bone conduction, it's got turbo pitch technology which probably sounds like a bit of marketing mumbo jumbo in terms of audio, but I was pretty interested in it for a couple of reasons. So for starters, for the past five years, pretty much every single day, I use bone phones. 100% true, I'm a big fan of bone conduction headphones. But the other thing is that, okay, this, re this review channel that you're watching now, I typically review hi-fi audio gear, you know, in-ear monitors, headphones, stuff like that. And bone conduction's never really been hi-fi, but I was curious to see, does ninth generation bone conduction technology actually make a difference in terms of the hi-fi quality of sound? Not that that's necessarily what I'm looking for out of this, but I was really curious to check it out. So I've got the new open run Pro here for review. Now, uh, this review is gonna, you know, not focus just on answering that question about sound quality because, like I just kind of alluded to, not my highest priority when it comes to bone phones. But I did want to take this opportunity to also compare the Open Run Pros to a handful of other Aftershocks or Shocks brand sets because I've got a few of them on hand and I figured might as well answer the question. Uh, which one should you get? Because this one, the new Open Run Pro, it's also, you know, it's the newest, but it's also their priciest at about 180 bucks. And kind of curious, what does that get you? So that's what we're gonna talk about in this review. If you're watching now live, this is a live stream. Welcome to the live stream, how's it going? If you have any questions about the Open Run Pro or bone conduction in general or anything else that we talk about today, leave it in the live chat. At the end of this review, we'll have a little bit of a back and forth conversation. Hopefully I'll leave any unanswered questions completely answered. But otherwise, um, you know, I guess we'll just jump into the review. A quick shout out to Shocks for sending this in for review. If you're interested in checking out the Open Run Pro, I do have a link in the description below this video. I, I almost rhymed there, but I avoided it narrowly. But yeah, let's jump to the table uh, and let's just kind of, I think I was actually just gonna start by talking about why I like bone phones, why I'm such a big fan of bone conduction headsets, and then we'll get into talking about how this particular set does bone phones. Does it? What, what are the things that it does well? What are the things that maybe it doesn't do the best, okay? And I'll just start by talking about, I mean, look, the main reason that I like bone phones is the convenience, right? Um, they don't plug your ears, right? This is how bone phones sit. They sit in front of your ears like this, and that's what I love. They're not about sound quality for me. Uh, at least they haven't been before this. We'll get into whether or not this is, but um, yeah, just really the, the purpose that these serve is not for hi-fi music listening, at least not for me. For me, it's really been all about two main use cases. Number one, podcasts. And then number two, this is a kind of a new one from the past couple of years, uh, is video conferencing, right? Do a lot of video conferencing during the COVID years. And because of that, it's been you know pretty important to just have a decent solution for talking to people over the internet and, and having headphones on my head all day, not a big fan of that. Having in-ear monitors in my ears all day while talking to people, not a big fan of that. And for me, bone phones have honestly been a really good alternative to both of those. And then I think this is a, not necessarily a third use case explicitly, but the other thing about bone phones that I really like is it, it really is just kind of like making a personal connection between your smartphone and your ears. All right. You could say the same for a pair of AirPods or, or a pair of, you know, wired earbuds or anything like that. But they all come with some sort of trade-offs in that you've got wires or you're wearing something in your ears, you can't hear everything around you quite as well. And bone phones don't make that compromise. In fact, that my experience with previous shock sets is that I wear them and I actually forget that I'm wearing them. I can go hours and hours without even remembering that I've got them on my head, uh, which is, I think, a testament to how comfortable they are. But I, that comfort, I think undersells really that utility of just having a connection between uh, my smartphone and my ears that's not playing out loud. And so that's why, frankly, I really, really love bone conduction sets. Again, like podcasts is my number one use for these things. I listen to a lot of podcasts and it's kind of like the number one reason that 
despite the fact that I've got literally over 150 pairs of headphones in my house right now. This is the set or the Aftershocks generally are the sets that I use the most because I just, I listen to a lot of podcasts and these happen to be, in my opinion, absolutely the best, right? You get no ear fatigue, you can wear them all day, you can hear your surroundings. I love it, okay? So that's a, enough gushing, I think, about the general technology, but that's why I'm very interested in bone conduction. So let's just talk about specifically this set, the Open Run Pro. What does it do well? And maybe what are the things that it doesn't quite do so well? All right, we'll start with the things that I love about this set. Like the my previous bone conduction set or my previous Aftershocks, I had the Aeropix, which I reviewed on this channel a couple of years ago. This set has a very, very similar form factor. In fact, it's almost identical in terms of form factor. And for me, that's actually a good thing because the form factor in the Aeropex is fantastic. And it's same here with the Open Run Pro. This set, well, I guess I'll throw it on my head. Uh, the shape that they've got with this set, just it fits really quite snugly. You can see that, you know, it kind of tucks in behind my head uh, comfortably. I, I, with some of the other bone conduction sets, like the, the headband can hang off a little bit lower and tap my neck. I don't really have that issue at all with this set. And um, just generally, like I mentioned, I can put these on my head and go hours without remembering that I even put them there. Uh, assuming I'm not listening to music or listening to podcasts or something like that, but they're just, they're comfortable. They completely disappear. The form factor is great. They stay in place. I love them for that. So, and I mentioned that the, the Aeropex before did that really well. These basically do it the exact same which I'm not mad about. These things are great for that. Uh, what else can I say? A battery life on these things is generally very, very solid. Uh, I was already pretty happy with the battery life on my Aeropex. Um, that was about eight hours of battery life. Here with the Open Run Pro, they upped it to 10 hours of battery life. Now, I can't really say that I notice a big difference because the battery on my, you know, my Aeropex is already pretty good. I tend to charge these things a couple of times a week given how much I use them. And, you know, uh, the, the extra hours of battery here, I'll say that I'm glad that it's there, but I didn't totally notice it. Like it didn't transform the usage of it. Although if you're using these for a long day at work or something like that, that extra two hours might make a significant difference. Um, another thing that I really like about the set, and again, this was also true with the last couple of Aftershock sets, is I love that they have this button over here on the outside of the headphone which might not seem that important. You, of course, you've got to have buttons on the thing, but what I really like about having the button here, no joke, is that I can reach over with my shoulder and hit the button. So that just kind of gives these things an added utility when I'm out in the backyard doing chores or I'm doing dishes or something, my hands are full. Even I'm like working in the garage, maybe they're dirty and I don't want to reach up and touch them. I can just kind of do that and toggle pause play. Ostensibly, you could accept and reject phone calls. I've, I don't take phone calls, so. Uh, haven't tried that, but there you go. Uh, yeah, that just honestly gives them a unique utility, um, being able to do that, that some other bone conduction sets don't let you do. And that's the thing that I've always appreciated here about the, the, the shocks or, well, they used to be aftershocks, now the shocks. I'll get used to that name one day. So I like that. Um, the other thing I like about the set is that it is sufficiently water resistant. Um, uh, they don't claim waterproof. They claim some sort of, you know, water resistant IPX. I forget exactly, uh, but it's basically enough that I don't worry about these things at all. I'll, you know, I'll walk in the rain with these things. Don't sweat it. If I'm out working out and sweating, don't sweat that either. Yeah, I, I honestly just don't really worry about the water resistance of these things. And that's been true of a lot of the, the aftershock stuff in the past as well. And then the last thing I'll say that I like about these things and in, in terms of sound quality, for podcasts is actually outstanding. It's great. Like, you know, podcasts are typically not recorded with the highest quality microphones or anything like that, but um, you do want to get a set that is going to at least sufficiently represent the mid range, right? You don't necessarily need a lot of low end on a, a set to listen to audio podcasts. You don't need a lot of high end, but you do need a nice clean mid range. And the, the, the Shocks Open Run Pro, I would say they do that sufficiently well. Um, that said, and now we'll get into starting to talk about the things that maybe I don't love about this set. We'll, we'll get into the audio quality, okay? Uh, what these things, in my opinion, still don't really do very well uh, is audio quality for music. We'll talk a little bit more about how these compare directly with some of the other Shocks offerings and talk about whether or not this is a, a significant upgrade, but 
The short version is that I, I really don't think so. I really don't think the ninth generation turbo pitch, whatever words they want to throw at it, has really significantly changed how good these things sound with something like high high fidelity music. Um, in my in my mind, these really just are a podcast audiobook communication device. You can listen to music if you want, like background music, they're fine for. But if you're looking for, you know, just really intensive analytical listening, this is definitely, bone conduction in general is just not the technology for you. Um, okay, so that's one thing that maybe I'm not super enthused about with this set. The other thing is that, well, here's this button. And I already mentioned how much I love this button. Uh, a comment I had for the last set was that I wish that they actually made it bigger because I talked about that that shoulder motion, I wish it was a little bit easier. Uh, they didn't make the button any bigger. In fact, it's pretty much the same size as it was with the, the, the Aeropex. So uh, I wish that they would make a change there. And then while we're on the topic of buttons, these are very small complaints to be perfectly honest, um, but a, a couple of complaints with the general button configuration. So for starters, this uh, button out here toggles pause and play. And it also handles like skipping tracks forward and backwards. So you like have to double tap it to skip forward and triple tap it to skip backward. I find that those double and triple taps sometimes like I just mess it up and I accidentally get the wrong input. So if like a triple tap specifically uh, is it's just a thing that I will accidentally input a double tap instead or I'll input a double tap with a small pause and get a, and a third tap and what it'll do is it'll Instead of skipping back 15 seconds in my podcast, it'll skip forward 15 seconds and then pause, which isn't exactly what I wanted. What I would love is if instead they use the volume up and down buttons to like long press to skip forward, long press to skip back. But curiously, they use the long press and the volume buttons for power on and off, which is basically just kind of reverse of most other Bluetooth headphones, right? Most Bluetooth headphones, the play pause button doubles as your power and then your volume buttons double as your track skips. Whereas here it's kind of the inverse and I do wish that they would change that. And then finally, the last kind of quibble I'll make about the uh, the Open Run Pros here is this, they, they got more expensive, right? Aftershocks have never been the cheapest bone conduction sets on the market, but in my experience, they have been the best. The Aeropix was my favorite that I've used so far, and this one actually got a little bit more expensive. It's about 180 bucks, and we'll talk about how that compares to some of the other shocks offerings um, in terms of price and whether or not it's worth it, but it is worth saying that the price went up a little bit, and that's not my favorite thing about it. So, I don't know. That's uh, the, the basic gist here with the Open Run Pro. Actually, one last thing that I should have mentioned when I was talking about the battery life, and this is going to be kind of a pro or a con, depending on your personal preferences. Uh, the charging cable that these things use is a magnetic charging cable. I'll punch it on that so you can take a look at it. So it's not like your standard USB charger. Uh, you've got a little magnetic port down here on the back and you just bring them within proximity of each other and you start charging. Now, some people are gonna not like that. Here's what my take on it. Having lived with this charger for the past couple of years, I'm actually a big fan of it. And the reason that I like it is that what I end up doing, and this is a pro tip for anyone out there, is I hook this thing up to a USB charging source and I let this cable dangle somewhere, right? Just imagine it dangling somewhere. And then I will take this set and just kind of do like a one-handed charge and it'll hold in place while dangling and then I'll do a one-handed removal and I like that because again I mentioned how much I use this set I'm always picking it up and putting it down and if I had to you know fiddle around with plugging in a USB cable certainly not the end of the world you do it with most of the devices you've got out there but not having to do it with this magnetic adapter I'm actually a big fan of it that said I will recognize some people would prefer USB-C or something like that and it doesn't have that. So those are my general thoughts here on the Open Run Pro, but let's now talk about how this thing compares with a number of other bone conduction headsets. And I'm delaying as I clear up the table, start moving these things into play so we can take a look at them. All right, so we've got the Aftershocks Open Run Pro, 180 bucks, uh, the, their big thing. Again, ninth generation bone conduction technology and a 10 hours of battery life, but that's not all we've got here. We've also got the Aftershocks. This is technically the Aeropex 
This is an older model that I bought a couple of years ago, but they've renamed the Aero Packs to just the standard Open Run. So this would be the new Open Run. This is the Open Run Pro. This is a little bit cheaper of a model, 130 bucks. Um, and the bigger difference with this set is that, well, it doesn't, the battery life isn't quite as good and the bone conduction technology is a generation behind this one. Uh, but they do have a little bit higher waterproofness claimed on this one. This one, they actually put the word waterproof on it, which means I've actually showered with this set. If you, uh, well, don't try to think about that too hard, but I have showered with this set and not really worried about it because of that waterproofness. So that's one of the sets we can compare it to. I think it's also worth comparing it to this set. This is the Shox Open Calm. So you can see this is a, a model that specifically has a boom microphone on it, which is kind of what makes this thing unique. If you're a big fan of Detroit Urban Survival, uh, he is <laughs> aware of this set. Um, but yeah, the price on this one is 160 bucks. So price range is kind of in between these, but the big difference really is that boom mic. And we'll talk about whether or not that actually makes a difference in terms of microphone quality. Uh, I've also got, look, this table is gonna start getting crowded. I've also got this, this is the Shox Open Move. This is kind of their, their budget entry level model. It's about 80 bucks, it's the cheapest model they sell. Uh, the battery life on this thing is a little bit less, right? So these were eight hours, that was 10 hours. These are also eight hours. Uh, this battery life is six hours. And then the other difference on this thing is that they've actually got USB-C charging for all you USB-C charging enthusiasts. Now, whether or not that's a, a, an upgrade or a downgrade depend on your personal perspective, but that is one difference here. And then finally, all right, I've left just enough room over here for a final competitor. Uh, this is actually a new set from the brand Eco, which you may have uh, seen previously on Super Review. Eco is kind of like actually a hi-fi audio company that has gotten into the bone conduction game and I was really curious to see does a hi-fi company do bone conduction different than a communication company like Shox and so they've got this this is the what do they call it the ITG01 or something like that the name's not great uh, but it's around 100 bucks again from a, an audiophile brand and gives you about six and a half hours of battery life um, but yeah that's kind of the different competitors in this scene and what we're going to do is i'm going to talk about how these things rank in terms of fit and comfort we'll talk about sound quality and we'll talk about microphone quality uh, which again i mentioned a couple years ago probably would not have been that important to me but because of covid and working from home and stuff like that microphone quality actually pretty important to me now and so i, did, I actually did a really well we'll talk about that comparison in a little bit uh, but let's just start with talking about how these things rank in terms of fit and comfort and um, the the fit and comfort on these things, well, it does it does range. I, this is gonna be difficult to, to to positionally rank these things. So maybe to some degree, use your imagination. Um, but I am gonna say that the most comfortable set is I'm gonna give the nod to the open run, the original open run, the not the pro model. Um, the only difference, honestly, between these two in terms of comfort is that this model does come in a mini version. So if you have a smaller head or you just don't want it to dangle off the back of your neck, um, you can go with the mini version. Otherwise, honestly, all three of these units fit me amazingly comfortable. I love the comfort level of all three of these units. Uh, this is, again, the Open Run, the Open Run Pro, and the Open Calm. They all fit basically the same. I guess I'll throw this Open Calm on my head so you can take a look at what this looks like uh, on a human head. But yeah, um, all three of these sets fit basically exactly the same with the exception that you can get the Open Run in a mini version. But yeah, fantastic. Love, love the fit of them. Uh, next up after these things, I would rank probably the um, the Shox Open Move comfort wise. These are fine. These actually remind me a lot of some of the earlier Shox models or Aftershocks or Trex or whatever brand names they've gone through, but kind of reminds me of those. You can see how they fit on my head. Um, they don't fit quite as snug around the ear, right? They're basically just less secure fitting versus the, uh, the, the more expensive Shox model. And um, they also feel a little bit bulkier because of the way that, you know, this thing, it's a, a subtle difference. Maybe I can show it here in the table. It's a subtle difference, but you can see that these ones kind of like curl around the ear and bend in so that they hug behind my ears. Whereas these kind of bulge out a little bit behind my ears. And then I also end up feeling 
the back of this on the back of my neck more so than with these other sets. Now, I would say these things are still perfectly comfortable. I can wear these things all day, but um, I notice these things on my head. Like I'll have to adjust them every once in a while. Whereas again, with these sets, I can literally forget these things are on my head. And that honestly is a really big difference for me. Uh, and then finally, in last place, I'll leave the uh, the Eco IT G01. Uh, this is just, I thought it would be worth bringing in this set, especially just as kind of a representative of other brands of bone conductions out there. This is not the only other brand that I've tried. I've tried some other bone conduction sets and this one, um, frankly, is kind of indicative of a lot of them. It's just, it's it's behind the, the aftershocks, the shock stuff in a number of ways. So in terms of comfort and size, like look at just in terms of size, like how much bigger this thing is. And then you can see um, the set isn't closing itself. So the when it comes to fitting it on my head, uh, it doesn't fit quite as securely around here on my temple. Um, it moves around a little bit more. Uh, you can see the set's also a little bit bigger and bulkier. I don't think that matters too much to me. But if you're into aesthetics, it could matter and be a, a significant reason um, to not pick it. But then the other thing that's, I think, worth calling out about this set is that the band between these things is completely exposed. Whereas all of these have like sort of a titanium band around them uh, that is completely encased in a silicone cover, which makes it plenty comfortable. Here with the Eco set, it's exposed and it's actually a little bit sharp on the edges. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily like, you're not gonna feel like it's gonna cut you or anything like that. It's just, you feel it on the back of your neck. Whereas again, a set like this just disappears. A set like the Ecos, it, it really doesn't. Um, I guess real quickly while we're on the topic of form factor stuff, another couple things where the, the Eco set, I think, falls behind. Um, one, it's got buttons on it, right? It's got these little buttons behind the ear. They don't have the all important shoulder pressable button, which I do actually miss. Um, so yeah, the button's just not as, as uh, available. And the other, other thing on that topic is that there's a button on either side of this, you can probably see here, uh, but they're actually the same button. And the reason for that is that Despite the fact that there is a headband connecting these things, otherwise there is zero physical connection between either side of these things. These things basically act like true wireless earbuds, which means if I want to turn these things on and off, I have to turn them on and off individually with the power button, uh, which to me is just kind of makes them a bit of a hassle that you don't have to deal with with the Aftershock stuff. So there you go. Um, I, that's about as much as I can say about how these things compare in terms of uh, fit and comfort. So now let's just dive into talking about the microphones, uh, the, the sound quality when, when you're talking with other people. Because again, I feel like this is newly important in the age of COVID or just in the age of working from home. And um, I actually did a really, well, I think it was an interesting test. Maybe I'm tooting my own horn, but I did a, I did a test of these microphones. I actually didn't include the Eco, so I'll pull you out of the, the microphone comparison test. But um, what I did was I recorded myself talking into each of these with fake vacuum cleaner background noise playing on a different computer, okay? Basically what I wanted to test was not just how do these things sound versus each other in the best of conditions, but how do they sound in the worst of conditions? Because they all advertise some version of background noise canceling. Uh, and again, in, in, in this work from home environment, that kind of stuff can matter a lot. Depending on your work environment, you might have you know, other people in the house. You might have a gardener outside with a leaf blower and having a, a noise canceling headset or noise canceling referring to the microphone noise canceling, background noise canceling um, can actually matter a lot. So what I did was I recorded these each with that background noise playing and then I actually threw it up on a server and I linked to it on YouTube. In fact, I will drop a link to that in the description down below. If you're interested in doing the blind test for yourself. Uh, basically, I've got audio samples from each of these sets uh, that you can listen to. I've got a, a Google form where you can kind of fill out and see which ones you thought sounded the best. And at the end of that, you can see how other people voted, which ones that they thought they sounded the best. But I'm gonna tell you which one I think sounded the best. I'll tell you also what the people thought because they pretty much agreed with me. Um, when it comes to sound quality from the microphone, maybe it's not a surprise, but I was kind of curious to see if it would be true. The best sounding set is this one. This is 
the Shox Open Calm, right? So it's got the boom microphone. I wasn't sure if that boom mic would actually make a big difference. Um, in terms of outright, if there was no background noise in terms of sound quality, I actually don't know that it makes a big difference. It did sound maybe a little bit clearer, but they all kind of sound like Bluetooth headphones. Like they're not the best quality microphones, but when it came to eliminating that background noise that I was playing, again, it was like simulated vacuum cleaner noise, this set by far did the best and this is okay maybe it's a bit of a spoiler but when you go and listen to uh, uh the, the the comparison that i'm going to link to down in the description um, you, you'll hear that the the background noise is really just dealt with the best here on this set whereas you can very clearly hear that background background vacuum noise on these other sets um next up after this set again this is ranked number one after the set i would actually probably say that the new open run pro and the the open move microphones they're, they're about a tie i would say the open run pro sounded a little bit better than the open move but they're about on the same level in terms of uh sound quality in terms of like knocking out background sounds um neither of them are going to win awards in in either area but for my uses if you're just like making phone calls and doing video conferences honestly both of them are pretty solid if you are doing video conferences in an area with a lot of background sound, I think it is worth considering the open comm, but otherwise these things are both pretty solid. So next up is gonna leave, unfortunately, my Aeropex. Um, and I'm gonna have to do a little bit of speculation here because this set is the Aeropex. This is a couple of years old. I've had this for a couple of years and I've used it daily. Um, now they've since upgraded the Aeropex to the open run. Uh, I don't know if they've made any changes with regards to the microphone. And I also don't know if my experience with the microphone on this set has anything to do with the age. But the microphone on this was noticeably worse than it was on these two. Part of it could also be the fact that the, the waterproofing on this thing is a step above, which just means that it might be a little bit more sealed than the other sets and that could have an effect on the microphone just got to say that my experience with this is that of the bunch this was the worst sounding microphone um so yeah that would be how i'd rank these things right in terms of microphone quality uh, shocker the one with the big microphone actually does sound better okay so that's how they rank in terms of microphone sound quality let's talk about how they rank in terms of audio audio quality, music and podcast listening. And mostly this comparison is gonna focus on music listening because that's where most of the difference is to be honest. But uh, we'll talk about the uh, podcast listening because that's what's most important to me. Here, um, you know what, let's start from worst to best because I think the best is a little bit of a surprise. Um, worst, unfortunately here is the Eco, even though this is from a hi-fi audio company and you might expect them to have done something uniquely better with bone conduction audio. Unfortunately, that's not really the case here with this set. Now, it does sound a little bit different. I would say that this set sounds thinner versus the Aftershock stuff, um, a little bit thinner in sort of the, the lower mid-range and, and mid-bass. Um, it sounds maybe a little bit more like speakers playing rather than bone conduction sets. Uh, the biggest issues that I have with this thing in terms of sound quality though, honestly, like the, the tonal balance is just different, but it's not necessarily worse. Where it is worse is when it comes to competing with background sounds, right? So outright volume on the Eco is unfortunately significantly lower than the outright volume on the other sets. And that's important when it comes to bone phones because your ears are not plugged. So if you're walking next to traffic or something like that, all that sounds getting into your ears still, and you need to have a set that will get loud enough that you can hear over the top of it. Unfortunately, the Eco really just doesn't do it. And part of that could be the outright volume, which is lower on this set. And part of it could also just be the, that tonal balance that I talked about being a little bit thinner in the mid range. Well, there's a lot of vocal quality and a lot of vocal body in that lower mid range that unfortunately these things just don't do that well. So last place in terms of sound quality would be the Eco ITG-01. Uh, second to last, I would say is the Shox Open Move. Um, sound quality in these things, again, it kind of reminds me a lot of some of the older Aftershock stuff. So perfectly usable, honestly, in terms of listening to music or sorry, listening to podcasts and YouTube videos and stuff like that. Audiobooks, perfectly usable. But it's it's in comparison to some of the other, the the more expensive Shock sets, it does sound a little bit more muffly, a little bit, a little bit lower fi. Um, honestly, 
just purely on sound quality, I would say these are actually good enough for me. Um, the sound quality would not be the main reason that I would get one of the other sets. Uh, I would get one of the other sets for the comfort level much more than the sound quality, but when you are comparing the sound quality, this set is decidedly a, a step behind the other sets. Okay, so that's that. Next up, I would actually say that these two sets, the Open Run and the Open Run Pro, sound about the same to me. So this whole video kind of started by talking about the ninth generation bone conduction technology that they've got here in the Open Run Pro. And in my experience, what it means is that these are maybe tonally a little bit fuller in the mid bass, maybe a little bit warmer and sort of that upper bass sound. But the bass doesn't really come across like better. Like it's actually kind of a, a hollow bass, which I don't know, it's bone foam. So I don't really have super high expectations for the bass. But I'll, I just gotta say like, in, in terms of that marketing mumbo jumbo about this new driver technology and the extra price that they charge for it, I feel like it's a wash in terms of sound quality. They don't sound exactly the same. There is a little bit of difference in terms of that tonal balance, but I honestly would not say that one set sounds better than the other. They just sound mildly different. Uh, so in terms of sound quality, look, both of these are fantastic for podcasts and audiobooks. Neither of them is great for music listening, although, you know, you can, you can do it in a pinch. And um, I don't know, that's about as much as there is to say about it. But that is leaving the final, the number one ranked item uh, in terms of sound quality. I actually give it to the open comm, which frankly I was pretty surprised by because this set, you know, it seems to be optimized for communication. The tonal balance on this does seem to be even a little bit more on the upper mid range vocal forwardness. Um, whether or not that's an intentional thing or just kind of a byproduct of something else, I don't know, but uh, it did seem to be a little bit clearer in the vocal region. And surprisingly, I actually found the bass to be the best on this. Not that it's like the most bass, it's not emphasized bass. None of these is a bassy set. In fact, if any of them, I would say that the, the Open Run Pro probably does have the highest tonal balance of bass or the, the bass is the, 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 the most emphasized there. But the bass here actually had um, not quite the, the level of hollowness that I heard in the bass here. It actually sounded surprisingly kind of like bassy, which not, not bassy in like the, a lot of bass rate uh, sense, but just that it sounded like bass, which was frankly kind of unique. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's kind of how they all rank in terms of those different categories. Now, in terms of my personal preferences, which one would I buy for myself? I mean, I've bought a few of them, obviously, because I, I have different uses for them. The set that I think is the, the best buy, though, honestly, is still the original, the Aeropex or AKA the new Open Run. Uh, there's the Open Run Pro, which, you know, it does have that newer technology. But they're charging extra money for it. In my opinion, it doesn't really sound any better. Um, maybe the microphone is a little bit better on these things, but the sound quality is not better. They're less water resistant. And um, I don't know. That's kind of how I feel about this thing. Honestly, as a bone conduction headphone, really just as good as these things, which I friggin' love. I would still give these things five stars out of five. But because these things cost a little bit more, and they promise some stuff that they don't quite deliver on, in my opinion. I'll give them four stars out of five. Still a really fantastic bone conduction headphone that if I haven't already sold you on bone phones, ask me some questions in the live chat. We'll figure it out exactly what it is you need to be convinced. Because in my opinion, if you are out in public with a smartphone ever, it's pretty much most people, this right here is the ideal solution for piping audio from your phone to your head. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I think that's about going to do it for my review here of the Shox Open Run Pro. If you're interested in checking out these or any of the other ones we talked about today, I do have links in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you found this review helpful, informative, whatever, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, ding the YouTube bell, and I'll catch you on the next super review. Unless you're here live, in which case, hang out and let's chat.